But on top of that, you know, he, he decided to do some other things. He decided to sweeten the deal for you today. He decided to sweeten the deal for you today. And that was to give you another opportunity to come into his house. To give him praise. To, to worship before the Lord. Amen. I'm feeling real good today. I'm feeling real good. I don't know about you. But I'm feeling real good today. I'm feeling real good today. stay right here in this worship atmosphere all day long. I don't know about you, but I, that's just me. I love to worship the Lord. That's just who I am. Amen. But let's go ahead and move on. I know that we have a lot of things to do today. and I don't want everybody to be able to go home and be with your families. And, you know, we want our, the mothers to... Uh, to have their, the rest of their day to be spoiled. I, I know the morning time has probably got you all giddy and bugged with some of the things that you've received and some of the things that you thought you weren't going to get and, and the phone calls and the love that people have been spreading around all over. I've been making calls all morning, so you know, I, know how, I know how I feel, so I know, can just imagine how you feel. But once again, we want to just say Happy Mother's Day to everyone. Even our future mothers. Happy Mother's Day to you too. Amen. Amen. Happy Mother's Day. That's right. <laughs> All right. I know one thing. Uh, one of the one thing that you know that, that has always haunted me uh, over my life, or over you know since you know every Mother's Day, I, I normally get sad on days like this um, because you know it's most of you know probably already that. Um, my mother passed when I was born, and I was just a few, probably just a few minutes old. And so all of my life, you know, I've always, you know, uh, found myself attaching myself to my, my friends' mothers and, you know, and, and, and having a temporary mother, mother-child mother relationship with, you know, different friends' parents. And, you know what I'm saying, and they've been so gracious over the years to welcome me in, and, you know what I'm saying, and, and do all they could do, you know what I'm saying, and try to fill that void. But the thing that I found out, you know, in, in, uh, in just a few years back was that, you know, once I really came in and I submitted myself unto the Lord, once I really submitted myself unto Him, I found out, you know what, that, that I can get that same love, I can get that same relationship with God, amen? All right. So I'm just glad today that, you know, that, that God's love is, is even more than, than a mother's love, is even more than a father's love. But, you know what I'm saying, he's given, he's given that to me, and I'm gracious for him. So that's why I'm excited today. I don't know right. about you. Amen. I know a lot of y'all, you know what I'm saying, some of y'all are getting to see your parents, and you know what I'm saying, you got like, you know, oh, and she's telling you what to do. You know, it is Mother's Day, you know, and, and the thing is, you have to realize the sacrifice that, you know, so not only we go through as parents, but mothers sacrifice a lot. Amen. You know, and until, you know what I'm saying, I got married, and, you know, and I really got to see firsthand, you know what I'm saying, what it is my wife does. Because some mornings I don't feel like getting up doing it. But you know what I'm saying, every morning, you know what I'm saying, I know she don't feel like getting up and doing it. And she does it like clockwork every morning. You know what I'm saying? Puts up with the attitudes, puts up, you know what I'm saying, with the I don't want to do or what I what I do want to do. And you know what I'm saying, and she does it, you know what I'm saying, graciously. So, you know, I salute, you know, my hats all salute to all you mothers that, that do. You know, so even if, just like you know, Pastor Carmen said earlier, if, you know, so even if you never have pushed a child out of your womb, still, you know what I'm saying, if you've ever sat down and told somebody's child not to do that, you need to get home before I tell your mama or, or told somebody anything right, like, you're still a mother. You know what I'm saying, because that's a part of teaching, amen? All right, let's get on into the, to the word this morning. Um, we're going to be coming from the, the, the book of Haggai this morning. The prophet Haggai, and uh, hopefully we won't be before you long. Um, you know, this is this word this morning. You know, as I was reviewing, I was looking over, and I was like, man, this this is a a, a, a restoring word, a, a word of restoration, a, a word of uh, of encouragement. You know, it, it could be so many different things. You know, what I'm saying, depending on how how you receive it. You know, what I'm saying, or where you are uh, in your walk with Christ. Amen. And uh, the topic that I chose this morning is called, I Got Your Back. 
I got your back. And that's what God is trying to tell us day in and day out. Look, I got your back. Go ahead and do what it is that, you know what I'm saying, that, that I told you to do because I got your back. Because even in the midst of, you know what I'm saying, different storms and trials and tribulations, we may veer and steer off and go in, 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 in different areas. And, you know what I'm saying, if anybody's ever been through anything, well, I know you have, but, you know, it's at different levels. But even in the midst of when things really got hard and when things really got tough, were you able to continue to do what God wanted you to do? Or, you know, were you, or did you steer off? Just to slide to the left, you know, like the song says, slide to the left, slide to the right. You know, hey, I even crisscrossed a couple of times, but still, you know. <laughs> I'm just glad that he that, that God is who he is. Amen. 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 I'm just glad that he is who he is. Um let's go ahead. Is everybody turning you everybody's at the book of Hagar? Let's go ahead and pray first. Father God, we just thank you for today, God. We thank you for the message that you you're delivering to your people. We just thank you for everything that you're doing. We thank you for being able to see our mothers, you know what I'm saying, for one more year and to be able to celebrate their, you know what I'm saying, their very existence on the day, God. Amen. We thank you for everything you know, that, that you just brought us through this year. You know, for everything that you're doing for us, God. We thank thank God for the man and woman servant that you have over this place, God. We thank thank you for them uh, being transparent and understanding. You know, what I'm saying the facets of your kingdom, God. We just thank you right now for everything that you're doing because we know that the greater is truly coming, God. You know what I'm saying? That the overflow is truly coming, God. And, and we're going to stand steadfast, God. And we're going to continue to stay in your word. We're going to continue to worship before you. We're going to continue to follow your commandments and do what it is that you would have us to do and until the greater shows up, God. Amen. Amen. We're going to continue to do it. And we're going to continue to grow in you, God. We're going to continue to grow in you, God. And this is all things that we've asked, God. We ask that you just once again just allow us a little more grace for this week to come. A little more mercy, God. A little more understanding, God. And in your name we pray. Amen. Come on and just Amen. praise him one more time. Amen. Come on and praise him one more time. Because I'm here to let you know this morning that God has your back. That God has your back. Like He really, honestly, and truly has your back. There's so many, so many ways, you know what I'm saying, that, 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 that He's shown us throughout the years that I got your back. But how many times have, you know what I'm saying, we really either not listened to, you know what I'm saying, uh, we, we've either not listened to what God is, is trying to tell us or what he, what he wants us to do. Or, or just like I said earlier, we just get right down to pressure cooking, you know what I'm saying, the thing just get too hot and we just run and go and sit down somewhere. You know, so but yeah. that just you know how it happens sometimes. It's like, but you know what I'm saying. But God's grace and it is his, his mercy. Amen. 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 Uh, but sister, says many times throughout our lives we're faced with challenges and challenges that propel us to the next level in life. It's the same with God. He sends us tasks and challenges so that we can be elevated into that next level in Christ. Whether that elevation is in relationship or trust. For those of you who strive to live for Christ. These two values mentioned are important keys and are essential in your walk with Christ. We should have that understanding, you know, so from the past few weeks, a um, few teachings that we've had that we, we, we understand that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Meaning that what's standing before me, if I want it, it's obtainable. I can have it. And also, Man. that's what's standing before me is if it's meant to destroy me, that I can, I can overcome it. And I can come over only the only way that I can overcome it is that, you know what I'm saying, that we've received victory through Jesus Christ through the cross. We've been set free through the cross. Amen. 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 But still, there's that reality that we face. There's still that, that same reality. Every time you know you can tell me that I'm free through the cross through Jesus Christ, but you know what? Still, you know what I'm saying, this messed up situation still keeps slapping me in the face. Oh yeah. He says, but but we as people, you know, we've been hurt so much. We've been lied to. We've lied to people. Baby daddy just the left don't want to have nothing to do with you. You got this child. Your wife, you know what I'm saying, sometimes get, get a little crazy and, you know, she you know, runs off. Certain situations like that. Amen. And even, you know what I'm saying, we, we, you know what I'm saying, we, we're, we're faced with sometimes where we have drug addicts in the family and we're dealing with those situations. Anybody ever had to go through that? 
Man, God bless you, because I've been through it, and I know, you know what I'm saying, what it takes, and, you know what I'm saying, and, and, you know what I'm saying, just, you know, times when you want to give up, but you still got to be there, still got to gotta hold on, even, you know what I'm saying, you're, you're being there in the place of the person, even when, you know what I'm saying, they just at a, at a low point in their life, and they just feel like, you know what, I can't do it anymore, and you still encourage them, and, you know, but the thing is, after all of that, after all the lying and all the promises, God still comes mm -hmm. back to you. In a smooth, sweet voice, and he says, You know what? I'll never leave you know what I will say. Right? Amen. But then still that's the same reality. And you know, I remember mean, some some certain times I've asked God just like this. I'm like, really? Really? You want me to believe that mess you're telling me? You know what I'm saying? But you know what I'm saying, after all that I'm seeing right here in my face. People still lying to me, people still doing the same old nasty, crooked. Crooked stuff to him, and you want me to believe it? And still, God comes back and says this. He'll still come back and say, He says, You shall laugh at destruction and famine, and you shall not be afraid of the beast of the earth. He said, I got your back. Amen? Amen. He said, I got your back. Also, in Deuteronomy 31 and 16, it says, Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear, nor be afraid of them, for the Lord your God, He is the one who goes with you. He will not fail you, nor will he forsake you. And once again, God is saying here, look, I got your back. Stop worrying about, you know what I'm saying, what it is that, you know what I'm saying, that's standing before you. Because I'm going to take care of it for you. Amen? Amen. All right. But he's just been that gracious. And, you know, the more that I can look back over my life, which hasn't been that long. <laughs> you know, I'm still young. Still vibrant. You know, I can still move around a little bit do my thing. <laughs> You know, but he's still been there. You know, he's still been there. He's still, you know, I can look back over my life and, you know what I'm saying, and see where he showed me, man, I've got your back. Mm -hmm. You got to believe me. All right. You got to believe me. But with that being said, let's go into the book of Hagar. Um, let's go into the book of Hagar. Let me, you know, pretty much give y'all a little bit of background, a little bit of history. You know, I do, I do, um, well, basically, like just like a little bit of background, a little bit of history on the book of Hagar. Um, basically, the, the, the prophet Hagar, he came uh, sometime after the, the fall of uh, Jerusalem. And the fall of Jerusalem came, uh, was basically came, when, if, you, if you can remember back um, when Jesus, when Jesus went into Jerusalem just before he got crucified. Uh, Jesus prophesied to the people of Jerusalem, telling them that, you know, Hey, you know what I'm saying? Because of your unbelief, because of you not, you know what I'm saying, understanding this situation or understanding who I am and not believing in me, you're going to fall. And so basically, you know what I'm saying, where this setting is taking place, this is, you know what I'm saying, after the fall of Jerusalem. And the people of Israel probably have has, has been out of Israel for some time, they've been some maybe hundreds of years. Um, you know, they've, they've, they've been out of the city of Jerusalem. And some of the uh, more faithful servants of God began to come back into into Jerusalem to mm -hmm. restore the city, to, to restore the city of Jerusalem. Amen. And so and, and so here we are. You know the people have have, uh, have started coming back and they're you know rebuilding the city and and you know everything else is around. People you know rebuilding their houses and you know we got the nice little two three hundred thousand dollar houses with the pools and. You know, they're rebuilding the shops and the stores, but then the one thing that, that lied, um, what could I say, the, the one thing, you know what I'm saying, the one building, you know what I'm saying, that, that should have meant the most to them, you know, lied in ruins, lied in ways. And, uh, and you know, the people, they were, you know, satisfied with, 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 with the way that it was looking. You know, because they go outside of, of, the, of the temple the way that they normally would, and they would sacrifice, and you know, they were, they were okay. But here we have uh, the prophet Haggai comes, comes in and he begins to prophesy to the people. Um, I'm, I'm going to read down from, from verses 1 through 5 and then we're going to stop and then we'll talk um, from there. Um, it says here, verses, Haggai 1, verses 1 through 5, this is a New King, New King James Version. It says, in the second year of King Darius, in the sixth month, on the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came by Haggai, the prophet to Zerubbabel, the son of the, the Sheatel, uh, governor of Judea, and Joshua the son of Jehozadak, the highest, the high priest, saying, Thus speak the Lord of hosts, saying, This people, the time has not come, has not come 
the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet, saying, It is time for yourselves to dwell. Is it time for yourselves to dwell in your panel houses and his temple to lie in, ruin, lie in ruins? Now therefore, thus say the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. God is saying now, consider your ways. Are you really considering your ways? Because really, you know what I'm saying, I, I really could come in here and I could talk to you about how, uh, you know, we should come in here and, you know what I'm saying, if your house is looking good, then the church should look good, right? I could easily come and say that, and I could really easily make that argument. But what God is saying to you is this. What about you, your body, your temple, the temple that I gave you, that I have entrusted in you, the one that you walk around with every day? Consider your ways. Consider your ways. Amen. Consider your ways. How is it you know, that you're handling your business day to day? You know what I'm saying? Are you putting God first in your finances? How is it, you know what I'm saying, that you're handling, you know what I'm saying, those of us who have children? Are you speaking to them? Are you speaking into their life? Are you pushing them into, you know what I'm saying, and into their destiny? You know what I'm saying? How are you interacting with other people throughout the day? You know what I'm saying? Are, are, you, are you smiling all the time? I know it might hurt, you know what I'm saying? Things may be a little bit ugly for you sometimes, but still, you know what I'm saying, are you still showing them the love and the care, you know what I'm saying, that you should be, you know what I'm saying, as, as though Christ is doing you? Amen? So he's saying, consider your ways. And more important, what about your relationship with God? How often are, are, are we really talking to him? How often are we really, you know, just spending that special time with him? Amen. How often? But here, we have the people, you know what I'm saying, the Israel, the people of Israel being stubborn. And then, the thing is, you got to understand this. It says right here in the words, it says that the God says that the people say. He said the people say. He didn't say my people. Oh, yeah. He didn't say my people say. He said the people say. So, you know what I'm saying? Really, you know what I'm saying? When, when God begin to, begin to say the people and not my people, something wrong with that situation. You know what I'm saying? You, you're stepping outside of some things, stepping outside of a realm. You know what I'm saying? That really God says, look, I'm not even going there. So, you know what I'm saying, if you want to go out there, you go out there. But, you know what I'm saying, what basically, pretty much what you're going to get is what you're going to get. Amen? Yeah. So, basically, what we're saying here is consider your ways. Consider your ways. It says, you, you know what, Sharon was all in my, Sharon and you know, I'm not even going to say that. But, anyway, let's go to the um, Haggai uh, 1, verses uh, 6 through 7. Um We'll go ahead and get through this real soon because I want y'all to have what y'all are supposed to have this evening. We're going to have a good time. Amen. But hey, God, 1, 6, and 7, it says, You have so much and you bring little. You eat, but you do not have enough. You drink, but you're not filled with drink. You, you, you clothe yourself, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages, earns wages to put them into a bag with holes. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. He said it again. He says, look, consider your ways. Consider your ways. And he said, how many times have you ever been in a situation that you sat down and and you're you're going over your bills and you know what I'm saying you get your paycheck and, and you sit down and you write down, all right, rent, light bill, car payment, groceries, um, party, <laughs> entertainment, more party. But then when you get to the end of the month. It, and you get to the end of the month and it don't work out. It don't kind of measure up. This is what God is saying here. You're sowing. This is your sowing, sowing and you bring in little. He said, but you, you don't, but you don't have enough. But then you drink it, you're still not filled. God is saying, you know what? You're doing all the things, you're doing all these things right, but then there's something missing. There's something Man. missing. And basically what, what, what he was saying was that something that's missing is that relationship with me. You being you understanding that, you know what I'm saying, that you have to put me first in everything that you do. You know what I'm saying? If you don't suck with me, you know what I'm saying? If you don't get into my word, you know what I'm saying? If you can't come to a, a point of worship with me, then you know what I'm saying? You can have all that stuff. The word says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world just to lose his soul? Amen. What does it profit you? What does it profit you, you know what I'm saying, to have a pocket full of money, but then you have no joy in your household? Amen. 
what does the prophet do to drive the best cars? But then, you know what I'm saying, every time you turn around, you, every, every corner that you turn turning around, you know what I'm saying, there's somebody arguing or fussing with you. It, you know what? I'd rather have nothing and have peace in my life and have joy in my life. Amen? Then to say I can have everything and be miserable. What does, what, what, listen, what was it, would it profit you to sell up in a 5,000 square foot home and you miserable? I know. You miserable in 25 rooms. <laughs> All right. Every room you go into, you miserable. <laughs> yeah. No, uh uh, I want to be free. And this is what God is saying. Why be miserable? You know what I'm saying? Why, you know what I'm saying? Why not, you know what I'm saying, do what you're doing? And then, and then it says here also, it says, just that it says, you know what, you earn wages and you earn them to put them in, in a bag with a hole. <laughs> How many times have you ever sat back and you know, said, yeah, you knew you just got paid and then you sat back and went, man, where my money go? Hmm. <laughs> where did it go? All right. Where did my money go? God is saying, consider your ways. Amen. He said, consider your ways. But here, you know what I'm saying, the, the thing that, you know what I'm saying, that really came, that, 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 that stepped out to me. A lot of times, you know, when we talk about that, it's what it says here, that you have sown much and you bring in little. Mm -hmm. Dude, the Bible tells us that, you know what I'm saying, you, you reap what you sow, mm -hmm. right? You mm -hmm. reap what we sow. Mm -hmm. But have you ever considered what you're sowing into? Go ahead now. Have you ever considered what you're sowing into? And so I, had, I thought about that thing, I said, man. Yeah. I what kind so of grand right. you working on? You know what I'm saying? So basically, what, what you're saying, God, is you know what I'm saying? Some, some certain things have to be in place. You know what I'm saying? Some certain, you know what I'm saying, right situations got to be in place. You know what I'm saying? For me to really be able to sow in something, and sow mm -hmm. into something, and, and to really, you know what I'm saying, receive something back from it. So I looked up what fertile soil was. And it says here, fertile soil has an abundance of plants, nutrients, nitrogen, Phosphorus, potassium, and an abundance of minerals including zinc, manganese, boron, iron, sulfur, cobalt, uh, copper, magnesium, and chlorine, and that abundance of and an abundance of organic matter 